The Phileas Club is made possible by its patrons. There is one way to support the show, and that's to become a member at patreon.com slash the Phileas Club. You decide how much you give, and you decide when you stop. You are in control the whole way. It helps the show enormously, even throwing a buck our way. That is why the show can exist. That is why I can do what I do. So thank you a million to all the people who do support it, and thank you a million to you if you consider uh, giving a little bit again the show is in the the link is in the show notes it c takes about a minute and a half maybe two to subscribe and it will make my day so if you want to make my day go to that link thank you very much hey everyone this is the Phileas club number 142 we are in february 2020 and we're talking about the virus the election and much more Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Phineas Club in this show. Do you know what you do? What? No, what you do, you know. But what we do, um, we get people from different parts of the world and we talk about stuff and we listen to each other, even though we might disagree sometimes. Uh, that is a novel idea which I've been trying to promote for a while now. And hopefully you enjoy it and that's why you listen. My name is Patrick Beja, and today I am joined by two wonderful guests uh, on one side of the ring. No, it's not a ring. It's just a, a table, a coffee table with snacks Around and table. drinks. Yes, there you go. These snacks are really good. <laughs> well, I am French after all. Um, there is that. So on, on that side is the returning Franco uh, from Peru, who's actually in France right now. Franco, how's it going? Yeah. It's been forever. Yeah, it's been like a long time. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So it's it's been good a lot of a lot of things I uh, a lot of work I guess but uh, now I have more work even because I'm split between three cities so <laughs> I don't have much time <laughs> but it's it's always good to be here. <laughs> so do you feel Peruvian still very much even though you're traveling so much? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, okay. it's I guess it's just the proudness of of, uh, of coming from Peru. I don't know. It's uh, I, I I've, I've I've often been mistaken by uh, um, Italian here in, in Toulouse because there's many Italians. Mm. And I guess I, I speak French as, as an Italian or something. You, you so do I'm have. Just, your I... accent does sound a little <laughs> bit Italian. That's true. So, so I'm, learning, I'm learning Italian, actually. So, so, so now I can actually <laughs> answer in Italian when somebody asks. <laughs> and you can tell them in Italian, no, no, I'm Peruvian. So. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, that's great. Uh, the, the reverse culture shock is when you really suddenly feel like you've changed it's when you go back for uh, a period of time although i'm sure you've gone back but well uh, it, 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 in fact I, I go to peru like twice a year at least mm. and um now that i have a kind of a, a spanish accent of because of living in spain so much uh if i take a taxi they often assume i'm spanish for example oh which and charge you extra or something or, or take <laughs> no, the wrong way <laughs> well no I, I i i know how to negotiate my tariffs that i haven't forget mm. but just because of the accent it's um yeah it's yeah it's 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 just thing that happens i mm. mean yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind it it's just a result of having lived somewhere else it's yeah it's it part does of who i am you. i guess uh, on the other side of the uh, snack-ridden coffee table is uh, Alex from Atlanta, an original, real-life Atlantan. How are you doing, sir? Yes, native Atlantan. There are very few of us. Well, Atlantan is what people from Atlanta will say. Well, he's from Duluth. There's no, <laughs> you know, you can't call that Atlanta. Uh, yeah, the, but yes, native Georgian uh, Atlanta. Grew up in the Atlanta suburbs. Wonderful. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself since it's the first time you join us and there's one key element of your personality and, uh, I guess, character that will define you forever uh, on this show? Sure. You're tall. Right. And, You're tall. And, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm, that's it. It's that I'm tall because everyone knows that on podcasts that's important. Mm -hmm. um, no, uh, I am, um, let's see. 
the child of two entrepreneurs, two conservative entrepreneurs. I guess that's the defining aspect that will <laughs> define me forever. And, uh, you know, I'll never be, be able to get away from it. Uh, I, too, lean conservative, specifically on policies. Uh, I lean probably more uh, liberal on social policies. They don't really have a word for that in America, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, you can call me an East Coast conservative. East Coast conservative. Excellent. Um, and, you know, I was saying that in jest, obviously. There's more to of you course. than just your political leanings. Uh, is there, there is. anything else? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> anything else you want to no, add? Well, uh, you know, I, I guess a little bit more. I, I am a strength coach as well. Um, I uh, coach people who are over 50 um, because as we age, everyone, you know, people who are, you know, over 30 are going to know this more than anyone. But as uh -huh. you age, you get, uh, you, you know, things start to break down. And, uh, if you work to continuously, um, prevent that, if you try to get stronger and stay fit, then, uh, you can actually prevent a lot of the age related degeneration that's going on. So that's, uh, that's sort of my field and what I do. I'm a starting strength coach for anyone who knows what that is. Damn it, I, I need your help so bad. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm curious, are we all entrepreneurs in this in this panel or something? Because we'll I guess we are, yeah. <laughs> to, That's you know, pretty it's funny. great. I, I don't really now consider we're myself this is gonna be a terrible podcast. <laughs> I, I, I don't really consider myself an entrepreneur though. It's I guess I am, uh, technically. You definitely but uh, yeah, well, but, since, but I don't. Since, yeah, since, since you founded a company, I guess that'd be. You know, <laughs> yeah, once, yeah. Once you found a company, you, you just become an entrepreneur by default, I guess. Yeah, automatically. Even if, you, if, even if it fails, you're, you'll be an entrepreneur all your life. <laughs> yep. You can never get away from it, just like me being labeled a conservative. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess three entrepreneurs, that's the bias of this show. But uh, there's another thing that we have in common, I suppose, is that we're we're hearing a lot uh, of about the coronavirus. Um, that might be something that the whole world has in common. But really, when I was looking at the news, there are a few tidbits here and there, the news from France and even from Finland. The main thing is definitely that. And I think I mentioned last episode that it was, or the last episode, last regular episode, that it was uh, the, uh, the main topic, but that it was being handled with relative um, level-headedness. And I think it's still the case. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty about how the virus works and how much it will spread. And the fact that, I guess, epidemi epidemiologists are now saying, you know, containment is, that's it. That's, you know, it's not, we're not going to contain it. So it's going to be a pandemic. So we have to deal with that uh, fact slash issue now. So, um, but in that context, I think France is approaching it relatively um, reasonably and saying there are things you need to do, but don't panic. Don't, you know, don't, uh, it's not going to be like the Black uh, Plague. So I guess that's the main takeaway I take from, from the French media. Uh, I don't know, Franco, do you, uh, do you, you agree that's how it's... You mean, you mean the media or you mean the, the, like... The government trying to to prevent it from spreading. You mean well, the I media think, doing a good job communicating, or the government doing a good job like preventing the. I the think contagion? in general, um, the 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 overall reaction from the media and the the government is reasonable. There are there is a certain sense of urgency, but there isn't like uh, actively stoking the fire of panic by by anyone, since it's not warranted. Right, it's still a flu, which is a bad flu, and we don't know a lot about it, so it might be worse than we think. But it's not like it's it's significant. It's not anecdote. You know, it's not like a joke. It 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 is killing people, but it's not something that you should uproot your life for trying to fight and to avoid. It's just it's still just a flu, and the the media and the government are communicating in a way that reflects that reality, I feel. There isn't, um, as some might expect, in the media, in the 24 hours news media, especially the artificial manufacturing of uh, panic and, and uh, yeah, that, that kind of thing. Do, do you agree, Franco? Since you're in France, I guess you have a little bit of that uh, sentiment as well. But... Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've seen the uh, now in, in university where I'm working now. I, I've seen panels showing what to do in terms of uh, prevention, and uh, I, I would guess, I mean, on the same on the same time, I don't know what's the correct measure myself personally, in terms of uh, being complete completely paranoid and uh, and uh, you know measured. So uh, I, it's hard for me to tell if. I'm not saying it's about they're doing it poorly. I'm just saying that I, I, for me, it's really hard to tell what's the good measure of, of, uh, of communication and and, uh, and work mm. they, they need to do. Right, but so, would, would you agree yeah. that they're that they're not uh, uh, inciting panic, whether or not it's warranted? Maybe we should all be panicking. Uh, okay, it's, it's okay, possible, yeah, but... yeah, it, I, I agree with that in the sense. Yeah, yeah okay. there's there's not in, there's there's no incitation of, of panic. Although I've heard there's some football matches that have been uh, not cancelled, but uh, they have just taken all the all the public, and so mm. they were just uh, played uh, without public. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was there's... in France. There's some uh, measures, and of course, we've seen major uh, trade shows uh, cancelled or people deciding just, not to yeah. go. For and example, that's like... last week I had I had a congress in France, and they, mm. it just went without any issue. I mean, no, nobody, I, I didn't see anyone with a, with a mask or anything. Mm. And I didn't see anything weird or anything. There was not even any communication in terms of prevention, which I don't think it was necessary. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm guessing, and, and as this Congress went along in Montpellier last, last week, I'm guessing many events are working as normal. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's how I'm, it feels like. Yeah. Go ahead, Alex. Sorry. I'm showing my ignorance here. Are there confirmed cases in France right now? Yes. A few, I think. Oh. Yeah. About 10. Um, okay, understood. Something like that. I think but, there's one person who died, which was not French. I mean, someone who came to France and died in France. I think. Mm. Not sure if there's more, but at least that. And and the thing is, no, the, nothing the, compared the, to Italy, but uh, yeah, which sounding Italian is not such a good uh, deal right now for you, Franco. I guess, but uh, the, <laughs> yeah. the the thing is, the uh, Minister of um, Health has said in France, he has said. Listen, the 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 pandemic is going to happen now. Like the 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 spread of the flu is going to happen in France as well. It's just a question of when. Um hopefully we delay it a little bit so that it's, you know, uh not it doesn't hit everyone at the same time. But it's going to happen and that's the general uh attitude i see towards it it's like it's gonna happen it's not gonna be horrible uh i mean yes it's gonna be horrible because some people are gonna die but again people die every day it's not like uh just wash your hands a lot uh use disinfectant like purell type stuff don't touch your face as much as you can avoid it and uh yeah that's it, it that's the state of things and it feels like it's not people trying to dull the population into a full sense of security when the world is actually ending. It's just people being responsible in the response to that uh, crisis. But Alex, how about you, you? When we said yes, there are confirmed cases in France, you went, "Oh, like did you?" Well, how's um, the feeling I, there? I am. I am. Uh, <clears throat> fortunate to be in a state where there are no confirmed cases currently. Um, but goodness knows that uh, if you happen to uh, look Asian and you're in at least my neck of the woods, uh, don't sneeze, don't cough, whatever mm. you do, because there's a whole bunch of uh, pretty ignorant people who are going to you know, start moving away and screaming maybe <laughs> and carrying on and all this kind of stuff. Um, I think that uh, you know, news media being what it is in America, it's been, it's been kind of a... Uh, a hot topic, and there's been a lot of fear mongering about, as you say, a virus that does. I believe uh, I'm not an expert in any of this stuff. What None I, of from us what are. Heard, no worries. <laughs> yeah, from what I've heard, uh, it does have a higher kill rate than the flu. But yeah. people comparing it to the Black Death, the Black Death had like an over 50 percent kill rate. So, it's yeah, not it's, it's 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 uh... not quite. It's a, a higher uh, death rate and it's significantly higher, but also we don't know, you know, who it affects. I think the latest I've heard is like older men uh, who have older diabetes are more prone to, uh, you know, being like it's this kind of category. But of course, it's still sure. very, very new and very young. So things might change. But at this stage, it's, it's that kind of thing. Um, so do you d did you say about the media? Are you saying that the the media is like not inciting panic but making it sound a little bit more uh, urgent 
then maybe it is or what's your feeling about the way it's being um, communicated by the media and maybe even by the government as well? Um, I think that the government does a does a pretty good job, has been doing a pretty good job, at least on, in my neck of the woods. You know, we're really close to the CDC and I have clients who work for the CDC and um, they've they've all been sort of messaging the same thing that you're talking about in France. But uh, I will say that the, the corporate media does not seem to um, be messaging that at the, mm. you know, lower kill rate or anything like that compared to what they're messaging of. Oh, God, there's another confirmed case here. You know, uh, I just read even something in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, which is um, not – it's usually more level-headed. Uh, but even them, they said – they had a line that said uh, there are no confirmed cases in Georgia. But mm. – right? And then 14 pe- – and then this big paragraph about how 14 people have been quarantined, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, it's, it's one of those um, – they ride right through the – uh, unsexy news and then they you know try yeah. to get you uh, to watch a little more mm, yeah that's <laughs> the... hear, hear more about how the coronavirus might kill your grandchildren after this commercial break <laughs> yeah. yeah it's I mean again I, I'm not I it that's what it feels like to me and and Franco you're confirming it so it seems that we're a little bit more reasonable in France, but also I don't watch like the 24 hours news networks. So maybe that's where the panic is happening. But yeah, it's still. Although, although I think I remember seeing a screenshot of a, of a, of a um, online uh, French newspaper. I don't remember even which one s- with the, something that could could be interpreted as exaggeration, saying like there's three cases and the a paragraph below is was like, well, three cases have been have been uh, confirmed that they are not. You know, <laughs> oh, uh, that, yeah, yeah. So, so it's that like not, I yeah. don't know. It's a play of words. I'm sure. Like, yeah, okay, I'm sure it happens. You click, I, you click, and then you see it's it was not really even the case. But right. I, I guess the it's just like, is, clickbait is the is yeah. universal. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. So Although, I guess yeah, I have I have to add yeah, with respect to Peru, for example, I was just to confirm I was opening the map to see in the infection. So in Latin America, there's no confirmed infections as of I don't know day before. Um, and I oh, received there's nothing message. south of the border, it looks mm. like, south of Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> south of the U.S. I guess right. we're not as integrated with Asia in general, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess but, not. Um, but the thing is, I, I received a message from my mother, like, some days ago, saying something like, um, a message, you know, those things you just forward through WhatsApp, saying, like, things to get, uh, to, to, to take into account to, to not contagious yourself or something. Mm. And I was like, why, why do you send me this? In Peru, there's not even confirmed cases. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I said it without even really knowing. And she asked me, and she answered me, no, there is. But oh. there isn't. So I'm guessing she got it from somewhere, somewhere, oh, somewhere so else. she thought there else. were cases. So, so uh, apparently, even if the media, I mean, I don't think, I don't think the media did, 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 did lied, but I, I guess the, things like this can always, uh, I don't know, be generated via social media or someone decides to, there's read something, communicates to someone else. And, and in a way, you get the impression that there is when there's not, mm. you know? So there isn't, but your mom thought there was for some reason, and you're not sure why. Exactly. Mm. Uh, maybe there was someone suspected to be, but right. then they confirmed he, that, that the person yeah. wasn't. I don't know. Or did just someone decided to com- start inventing things? I don't yeah. know. But I, I, it, it can happen, I guess. I guess. Especially yeah. through WhatsApp groups. Yeah. Mm. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's so it's WhatsApp groups in uh, in Peru that are... Uh, the vector for these kinds of things, I suppose. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, it would be interesting uh, to compare. They are vector for any different, any you know, false this information or non yeah. information yeah. in general. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, there you go. I guess the 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 bad uh, uh, mark on this uh, on this point goes to the American twenty four hours media, which again is never. Rarely good for anything. Yeah. Rightfully earned. (laughs) Um, How about the rest of what's happening in America, Alex? Is what's making the news um, and the rounds and everything? Sure. So um, the the biggest thing across all the news media right now is the uh, shocking realization that Bernie Sanders is not a phenomenon. He is actually a a, somewhat of a movement. you know, making it's making his rounds, uh, winning Nevada and what could be called a landslide from what I understand. And, 
then moving on to South Carolina. Um, so th- wait, ahead. just so just so I understand, um, is he like he was kind of an outsider, like the the weird communist quote unquote dude um, <laughs> in the in the Democratic Party? Are you saying that he's in the lead or getting near the lead now? Yeah, uh, from what I understand, he has the most dele- He is the front runner. He has the most delegates. Wow, he's on. Okay. He's uh, I believe he's on top of national polls. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he is the current front runner. Um, he was tied for front runner with Pete Buttigieg, who's a more moderate, younger candidate. Um, and, uh, he won Nevada and, uh, Pete Buttigieg was not, I don't think he ever got to viability and it's, it's a, it's not worth talking about how they do that, but basically Pete Buttigieg didn't get any delegates and, uh, Sanders got a bunch. So, um, he is currently the front runner in the mystery space points that we judge front, uh, democratic <laughs> candidates by. So how, how, uh, likely is it that he will remain in that position? Um, and, and, you know, or is it like something that could go all the way to the end of the primary or is it something that given what States it's being held at what time is probably going to erode? Um, you know, that's, that's, you know? that's the million dollar question. And it's one mm-hmm. of those things that I think everyone's going to have their own opinion about. Uh, but I, I can definitely say that when this, um, election started, I bet a friend a hundred dollars and I think I'm going to get that hundred dollars that Sanders would win the, uh, the democratic nomination. Um, you know, if you look at what happened in 2016, the way Donald Trump won the, uh, the, um, nomination to the Republic to be the Republican candidate, you see the exact same thing that Bernie Sanders is doing now, mm. reductively anyway. You see that, you know, there were a bunch of people nipping at each other's heels and, and biting each other's heads off and all this kind of stuff. And Donald Trump was there with just 30 percent of the Republican vote. But he kept that 30 percent the entire time through. Mm. And everyone else was sort of trying to ride the same lane and, you know, button each other out and destroying each, sabotaging each other, each other's campaigns. And Donald Trump was riding in a totally different lane, free and clear, and uh, sort of just drove right past everyone. <clears throat> and so you, you guess that's what's going to happen. What do you think of, I mean, possibly, what, what do you think about Sanders? How do you view him? Because, again, um, I, 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 my feeling is that Many Americans, if not most Americans, see him as so far left that he's dangerous, dare I say. Obviously not the, all the people voting for him, but they're, they're a little bit uh, wary of his politics. They see him very much to the left. And from what I understand, he feels like he would be to the left even in Europe, which for America is like, like he's essentially Satan. Um, <laughs> is what I understand, but what do you <laughs> that's think about, about him? right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's pretty much how he is viewed among, uh, I'd say the majority of conservatives, or at least conservatives over the age of, uh, probably 50 in my neck of the woods. Uh, you know, I can't speak for all of America, but I guess I am right now. Um, that, <laughs> yes, please. That, that's, that's, that's what uh, we do in this show. Exactly. We represent the whole country. <laughs> you you've got a, yeah you've got you've got a lot of single issue voters in that demographic people who are over 50 and uh especially in my neck of the woods where it's it's a higher income level um these people have their entire retirement tied up in you know investments and the economy is really their single issue now now you have the other votes the evangelical vote single issue abortion and all, all of this complications but you have a a ton of people who are just looking at the economy and saying it is good now don't screw anything up and mm-hmm. that's you know one of the primary reasons they're voting for Donald Trump um, or they will vote for Donald Trump in the election, no matter who the Democratic candidate is. Um, yeah, which I should, I think we should, we did acknowledge it a few times, but I think we should acknowledge it now. Um, for all the issues that many people have with Donald Trump, and I would say uh, justifiably so, um, yeah. the economy in the U.S. is doing really well. Now, some people will say, as always, you know, it's the previous administration's doing, and it's the blah, blah, blah. blah. Sure. No matter what, he didn't wreck the economy, 
And that is something to be noted. The, the, the U.S. is doing well. And uh, that's... Well, so, so far, I mean, if you add the trade, the trade conflict with China and the coronavirus epidemic... Who knows? Well, I mean, I don't think well, we can pin the, the virus epidemic no, on no, him. No, it, no, it's, it's not his fault, but maybe it's not his merit that the economy is doing good either. I mean, and, and, and people don't care if it's really the president's fault. Or uh, you know, well, I should make the argument that the, the, the trade war with China has caused a lot of supply chains to change their, their routes so that they're trading with other partners who are then not coronavirus spreading, you know, virus mm. through their... People I mean, traveling from that sure. uh, that country. So we we could argue about all of this. I would say that yeah. uh, Franco's reaction is the reaction I was uh, kind of alluding to, which is probably a left leaning person's reaction. Which honestly would be my reaction as well. But for the sake of uh, just neutrality, I, I think it's fair to note that the economy. When he was elected, and I don't want to make all of this about Trump, but when he was elected. I'm pretty sure that everyone who didn't like it, everyone in the world who didn't like it, including me, who didn't like him, including me, were saying, well, there you go. You put a clown in the White House and now the country is going to be toast. Like this was and the initial uh, cat uh, catastrophic uh, coming and going in the White House and the staff, you know, leaving like it seemed like it was run really badly. And we were certain i'll speak maybe in slightly general terms we were certain that he was going to wreck things at least to a little I, extent i would argue that i would argue that most people were hoping not only just certain <laughs> but eager to see that they yeah. were that he was going to wreck things and and it's possible, yeah, yeah yeah and i would say mm -hmm. okay just for i'll just just say this one thing um uh, i'm not sure how much of the economy not being wrecked is his doing as well? I understand. Oh, but almost it none. Doesn't I'm, sure, matter. I'm certain of it. Well, right. there's a tax break that could definitely sure. help. Yeah, that that could definitely have have, have juiced up. But re really, I mean, yeah. Patrick, you're exactly right. That the president has almost nothing to do with the economy, and especially for a seated pre for a seated, sitting president, the economy is the only thing that matters for getting reelected. It makes right. absolutely yeah. no sense. But that's that's yeah. how it has been as long as I've been alive mm. anyway. And, and again, we're saying, you know, he has nothing to do with the economy. I'm pretty sure that if you ask the same people how uh, uh, much, you know, Obama or Bush or Clinton, depending on your camp, if they're depending responsible for the country d doing well, they will say, yes, of course, obviously, yep. you know, he's the president. So yep. anyway, Obama did great for the economy or no, he was the worst yeah. thing that ever. And, exactly. and there is some of that that's true. I mean, I know that I don't know about the economy at large, but I know that uh, certainly with the advent of Obamacare, um, uh, certainly my parents and many of my clients ended up paying thousands, tens of thousands, sometimes more dollars in health insurance than they would have otherwise prior to prior to that mm. legislation. So that, that there's definitely high, but, aspects okay. of that that are, you know, mm. uh, that that are wounds. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, uh, let's not get into Obamacare. We would be here all sure. day. Um, all right. But because I really want to, but I won't. But uh, <laughs> all right, so let's go back to Sanders. Um, we were saying he, he feels like essentially Satan, and you're saying that for a lot of uh, um, older, senior uh, conservatives, they are very, very wary of him potentially becoming. So I guess one argument is if he is the Democratic candidate, you alienate a number of uh, potential swing votes who might lean conservative and who might dislike Trump and might go demo vote Democrat, but not for Sanders because he's so, quote unquote, extreme. Because um, he's not a, yeah, because he's not an establishment Democrat. Right. And I, I have heard that um, a lot. And I, I don't really believe it um, because the same exact argument was levied at Trump. Mm. And uh, that was not the case. You know, um, I think that in if if the Democratic Party does want to win this, uh, if you're just looking at like a horse race, uh, if the Democratic Party does want to win this election, they have to do something different because uh, they you know, they ran a strong establishment candidate last time and mm. she lost Donald Trump. So. Uh, yeah. I, I think that probably Sanders is the best chance they have of doing the impossible, 
which is unseating a sitting president in a good economy. That that is, I don't know that that's happened yeah. in the last, certainly in the last thirty years. It it certainly seems that it requires some kind of a hail mary or trying something different. And S Sanders, I, I feel like again that is uh, uh, anecdote, uh, 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 you know, empirical, and it's just my sentiment. But I feel that there is a little bit more. Um, awareness of the issues of capitalism and i say this as a big fan of capitalism and someone who defends it um against pretty ignorant uh uh critics in france very often basically ignoring all the good that capitalism has done over the past god knows 200 years but certainly 50 years or you know after the war Um, but there's this, you know, this meme, which is late stage capitalism and all the problems it creates. And those, I think it's, you know, for all the good that, uh, the system does, it also can be improved and there are issues, serious issues that it creates. And, um, those are more visible than they were before, I feel. And, more people are understanding that aspect uh, than even four years ago when Trump was elected. So I feel like the wind behind the sails of um, Sanders might be that sentiment that it's kind of, it goes hand in hand with um, the, the climate change issues and how much more, not visible, but how much more aware people are of the fact that this is an issue. And I wonder if, if Sanders was a little bit early four years ago, but now... It's like he's he's talking about uh, problems that people understand are real and not just like the fantasy of an old uh, left-leaning uh, dude who rants sometimes at clouds. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I, I think I think it's rare the person who doesn't um, admit that there is a problem. Uh, with the way that the American dream is is sold and then the Amer the way that the American dream actually works out. Um, I think that everyone in my camp in sort of my camp, if you want to call it a camp, um, everyone on the conserv in the conservative party, at least those who are who are entrepreneurs who did, you know, sort of build what they have, uh, everyone wants that for any, person living in specific, especially their community but it living in america right everyone thinks that uh at least in my in my neck of the woods thinks that if you work hard and you know persevere you should be able to rise yourself out of any socioeconomic class or wherever you were born and get to where you want to go you know that that the you know that is unanimous um i think the place is that, alex sorry is, yeah. is that unanimous in terms of uh goal or objective which i understand it is or is it still unanimous in terms of thinking that it's still the case that the, so the that's American that's where the disagreement alive? is yeah. yeah i i think that i think that a lot of people um you know people who the people who live in a lily white area of even like georgia you know georgia is still um fairly segregated class wise um, in that, you know, or Atlanta is rather that, you know, if you go to certain pockets of Atlanta, you would think that the only people who inhabit there have, have inhabit it, have white skin, drive Maseratis or drive Mercedes and uh, all this kind of stuff. And if you went to certain parts of uh, uh, other parts of Atlanta, you would think that there wasn't a white person around and that, you know, it was a very, you know, uh, it was a hard to do city and these kind of things. Right. It's very much um, pockets of each. And so if this, if some person grows up in, you know, Sandy Springs and they are exposed to high income and, uh, they don't really see the inequality, it's very easy for them to say, no, I, I got a job at a bakery and I, you know, worked my, worked at that bakery and I learned how to bake. And then I started my own bakery and I, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And what they don't realize is they were able to do that because they were, you know, their father got them that job and then they were also in a really affluent uh, area. And so they had a lot of customers who wanted their really good product and all this kind of stuff. They don't see that. Yeah. So it, it, there is this, but so yeah, let's go back to the concern that 
it isn't necessarily like the the issues with capitalism. People agree there are some, but mm -hmm. relating to Sanders, they might say, "Yeah, sure, it's not perfect, but that guy's cuckoo." Yeah, I, I, right. I yeah, I, I had a sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, I had I had a, I had a question regarding this, regarding Sanders for Alexis, and mm -hmm. I said, it, it, "Does you think do you think that?" Sanders has moved the Democrats to the left in that sense. I mean, uh, has has his policies of what he or, or what he proposes has make other candidates also try to you know imitate as as Donald Trump did with the Republicans in the sense that he just make them appeal to their to the to the Republican base in terms of immigration or, or whatever you name it and. Do you, is, your, is it your opinion that the Democrats have, in a way, turned more left than before, just to try to compete with Sanders, or because of because of Sanders? Franco, I think you nailed it when you when you compared it to Donald Trump, and that it it I I don't think he did anything. I think he saw an opportunity and capitalized on it, just like Donald Trump did in the 2016 election. I think that the Democratic Party was was already moving that direction. Because of the growing inequality in America, you have an enormous base of uh, people who are not making uh, as much money as their parents were by half. And they grew up in certain circumstances and or they grew up with friends who are in cer certain circumstances and they are unable to reach those circumstances. And they feel like they have been, you know, cheated out of the American dream and the, the sort of... Um, Uh, the evil empire is the billionaires of the world who are amassing wealth and not, you know, high CEOs with $14 million dollar pay per year. And they're not getting, you know, giving that money back to the employees who are working in their companies. Uh, and that's 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 certainly um, a demographic that was already there that Bernie Sanders then capitalized on and spoke to. So but is that a sentiment that you're describing that is that exists in uh you know possibly parts of the conservative leading tendencies because you, you seem to have a very good grasp on that sentiment oh, you're describing it almost as you share it as if you share that that feeling i don't know okay uh i i you know i'm i am 26 years old so i i live in that environment mm -hmm. the millennials are are the generation that's propelling sanders to this these enormous victories i think um at least from what i from what i've heard um No, I, I, you know, uh, am an, I am a rather successful, uh, entrepreneur built the business, that kind of thing went, went the whole nine yards there. But, um, what, what I see is still that disenfranchisement with the, right. with the, uh, American dream. I think personally that, you know, there is an aspect of the economy that could change for the better. Like you said, it's capitalism. It has worked incredibly well. You could improve it. You know, mm. probably it doesn't make sense for CEOs to make $14 million dollars a year for, and for the employee that's working in the same company to make 725. That, that, that doesn't make sense. Okay. So you um, do share parts of that sentiment. That's, that's right. So yeah. Yeah, I, I I definitely think that there is that there are problems, but I think that you know what Sanders is pitching, which is this total overhaul, tear everything out, and or you know what, I think that's what's what's um, uh, modeled anyway. He's probably mm. not. That's probably not his intention, but that's what is being proclaimed that he's yeah, going to do. Yeah, that's what he's that's selling, but it's probably overhaul. not what he would do if he was actually in office or what he could do. But... You would hope. <laughs> you would hope. <laughs> It's he, definitely he, yeah. what some people want him to do. It's yeah. definitely what I, I don't know about a majority, but many of his uh, supporters want to happen is a total yeah. overhaul, overhaul. Well, a it's revolution his base. It's his base, society. right? It's it's the base yes. that that it's propelling him now. And it's like, he's it's going like to have to base. widen a little bit. Yeah. Just like the base of Trump supporters literally wanted all of the Hispanic immigrants who were illegal to be deported immediately. Like yeah. there was there was a base of Trump supporters that wanted that to happen. Yeah. It's not of the majority, but it's the base. It's a base. Okay. Frank, yeah, I was just going to say that uh, listening to, to, to you talk, Alex, I would say that maybe a better alternative to, to beat Trump would be a. Not Sanders, but one of the other, I mean, I don't know, Bloomberg or uh, Peter Putijek, in the sense that since they have gone 
left a little bit, but there's still sensible Republicans who are who are aware of the of the inequalities and the issues at hand. I would assume that they are the most, you know, I don't know, prepared to just make the make the the, the ones that voted for Trump last time some. To, to, to cross into the Democrats and say, okay, they're not they're not as crazy as Sanders. I mean, of course, I'm repeating an argument that anyone can make, right? Uh, not as crazy as Sanders, still reasonably uh, sellable. I don't know. But that's you know, what I, Alex I've really was saying. Yeah. Go ahead, that's, Alex. That's, that's really true, Franco. I've heard that with many of my clients that, you know, they love the economy. They love – if they keep saying over and over again, if Trump was not such an asshole – and sorry if I can't <laughs> curse, oh, but if he was fine. not su just such a, a, a prick, he would be one of the best Republican presidents that have existed in the last 30, 40 years, right? He, he's just – he's done great for the Republican Party and the Republican values um, from a – from like just a strictly policy standpoint, but he is such a prick that I have heard people say even with all that – with what I wanted, seeing that happen, I would still think about voting for a Democrat if they just hadn't put up Hillary Clinton or if they just didn't put up Bernie Sanders. Mm. Um, there was definitely that sentiment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to refrain from talking about Clinton again. He was <laughs> <laughs> demonized in a way that is, you know, anyway. So, um, yeah. She earned okay. it she, I, a little bit. At least, yeah, well, a, a little bit. Yes, you can't I blame I, everything on on the on the news media. You have to take responsibility no, no. for I, some. I I think yes, I think she earned it. She has she had some some missteps, but not to the extent that 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 sentiment. She earned criticism, but the oh, I would never vote for her, no matter what. Yeah, is I don't yep. I don't I don't yeah. even think she earned the criticism. I think she she was. I mean. Well, she, she's criticizable say, as any politician is criticizable. I mean, I'd, yeah, that's I fair. Know. That's fair. I, I don't think she should have gone to Lehman Brothers and and you know get paid to do speeches, for example. But that's not what was necessarily being uh, leveled against her. But um, anyway, all right. Let, let's let's not remake that the, that old election. But yeah, we're we're gonna move on. This is really interesting. I didn't realize actually that Sanders was uh, the front runner. And uh, oh yeah, well maybe well, we'll do maybe a... it's because Bloomberg is aiming for Super Tuesday, which is next next week. I think yeah, so it's possible. It's that... still there's still the chance that next week everything changes. Yeah, oh, no. we we Americans got to watch a public execution when on the first debate that uh, that Bloomberg <laughs> participated in. He was <laughs> publicly executed. I don't know. I don't know what there what was who was there at the South Carolina debate, but it. He was he was killed on stage. Really? Uh, it was amazing. Really? <laughs> what? Why? What happened? What was his uh, failing? He, he was he was attacked. You know, it 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 really did seem like arrogance. He was attacked by every single uh, other candidate, and uh, while he was ready for some, and you know, Bloomberg does have this way of rolling with the punches in some ways. Um, he was not ready for a lot of the assaults that were levied at him, uh, Warren through some particularly sharp barbs and uh i think his polling uh plummeted um mm. and that's sort of one of the things that allowed bernie sanders to again it's the same thing that happened in 2016 as far yeah. as i can see that's exactly what you were describing um all right we're going to move on to south america uh but i do i can't resist asking you what you think of trump uh because we we get a few uh uh you know, conservatives on this show every once in a while, but it's there's always this sentiment. There's this tendency for um, other people to paint all of the conservative uh, people with the same brush. And I wonder, you know, where you stand uh, about Trump specifically, what you think of him? Um, you know, I, as I said, when I started out, I am I am fiscally conservative, but I am socially more liberal than probably your average conservative on the street. Mm -hmm. Although in the East Coast, I see more and more people who are like that. Um, <clears throat> Trump is a uh, a right asshole. <laughs> he is a just a really I would never, ever invite him to dinner. I would not allow him into my house. Um, but he is also, like I said, 
uh, from from the viewpoint of a Republican who has Republican values, which are not invalid just because you don't believe them, right? Just because someone else from another party doesn't believe them doesn't make them invalid. Those, for someone who has those values, he is one of the best presidents from a policy perspective that we've seen, right? So um, I I do not like the guy. Uh, I voted for my mom in the 2016 election, just <laughs> like uh, just like Justin Robert Young did. Um, I don't. We had sort of this like brain connection or something. I I wrote in my mother's name. Um, <laughs> but as as you know, from the perspective of what his policies are, uh, he's done a great job from a republic as a Republican president, mm. and I personally think that if the uh conservative party didn't have such a vice grip on the electorate of that of that you know of the republican nominee um and if he was able to pander to uh, a little bit of different audiences uh we would even see him be a little more humanitarian than he has been in during his presidency oh wow okay <laughs> all right maybe um, he, he's he's an entertainer he knows how to work the crowd and he's working it is not it is not donald trump that is that is the uh the issue there it is you know there is there is the electorate that he is pandering to that wants that to some degree all right well i'll, I'll just let your um comment as is and i won't i won't push it further um all right franco what's happening in south america well as we, as we were saying there's there's most importantly what's not happening is the coronavirus which is good <laughs> uh just luck i guess um and uh i was i was i've been trying to read and ask uh, uh colombian friends and uh, you know brazilian friends about w what was happening in their country specifically and mm. well i guess another thing that was not happening in a way is the protests that were were very present uh and i think it were really internationally recognized uh, mm -hmm. at the end of last year i don't yeah. know i don't know if that got into into the news i i, I think oh yeah it, yeah yeah it, it, it in got France, into the phileas club it. we we talked about it uh, at length about both of them uh, at length with with specials so yeah, yeah. so it's it's yeah i mean it's not as if everything's over, but at least, well, there's no the, the protests uh, have calmed down in a way. Mm. Uh, when when discussing this, uh, some some maybe one month ago or so, but I, I, with some friends, I think one one mistake people did about this this mass protest. And, and just to be clear, protests were uh, same time in Colombia, Bolivia, well, Venezuela. We can consider it. A, 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 a country where the protests are co are constant, but also in um, in uh, in Chile, very strong protests, and in Ecuador. So, I there's no common uh, one mistake people do. I think, especially here in France, where we're, where we're discussing this, is that to you know group the whole continent into one into one thing. I think it's it's a very it's a very easy thing to say. Oh. The country is 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 is, is mad uh, in general, or you know the, the right. The whole the, continent is issue. mad about there's the same a, thing. Exactly, there's an issue that's 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 uh, you know common to all these movements. I mean, I guess there's some kind of contagion in the sense if you see that the other countries is, is protesting, of course, maybe you are more inside to to do it. But each one has had its particular reasons. Uh, I would say that maybe the most common thing around it was the the fact that the the commodity prices have been going down or have been have been down in general have been low in terms mm. of and you know Latin America in, in, in general depends a lot in beet oil you know copper gold whatever you name it uh, and uh, if they if prices are low in general or companies have less money and they cannot and there's more unemployment or the government if it's the government that extracts the resource in some countries it is you know, it has less money to suspend on things or you know to it has to raise prices for example whatever mm. so it, it is true that there's this one thing one common thing that, and, and 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 sadly it's gonna get worse because this uh, brazilian friend was telling me now that with the coronavirus uh, china is buying less things and i guess it was also the trade war in the previous months and so china is the i think number one 
uh, uh, buyer for for or trade partner for many of the big countries in South America at least. Um, it was USA, and now it, they compete depending on the country. But if China goes bad in some way or another, the continent suffers definitely because the prices go down because they buy less stuff, they build less stuff, and they need less, I don't know, copper or gold or whatever. Mm. So, yeah, in this context, uh, you know, there's... there's The one thing is, is this, this, this process that have been going on. Another thing that's uh, going on little by little is that uh, this... I don't know if you, if you know, it, it was named the Pink Tide at some moment. And it was in the 2000s, mm -hmm. so well, 20 years ago already. Um, it was the, the, the several countries, in, especially South America, but some in Central America, were turning left. And uh, the leader of this movement was, of course, uh, uh, um, Hugo Chavez uh, in, in Venezuela. But uh, many countries turned left into, a, they call it 21st century socialism. So it was Venezuela, Ecuador, Argentina, Brazil with uh, with Lula and and uh, um, and Uruguay also, which has been always been left. And nowadays, not all, but most of the of those countries have been turning right. So now we're in. A, I guess it goes in waves. Mm. Yeah, it's all <laughs> with with the populism wave essentially, and they yeah, it's true. They're all in I, that uh, movement, or almost. Yeah, I mean, it, there's it, there were populists on the left, and now. Many are populist on the right. So, mm -hmm. for example, in Brazil, we have uh, Bolsonaro. Right. Um, and uh, and uh, but the, and and there's you know there's all these other countries like Chile and Peru who've never been nor extreme left nor extreme right. Have always been more right than left, but you know more or less in the middle. Who have at least for the last I don't know 20 years um, that have been staying on a little bit. You know without well. Chile had these mass protests, but besides that, they have been going on more or less stably. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, 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 it's it's interesting to see how the you know these 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 things that come in waves. You know, now we're in the in the more you know right wing uh, part of the wave, and it's mm. it's it's gonna be interesting to see how how people react to to this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I. I have a question, Franco, if I could ask. Um, what when when you're saying right, is it is it still sort of the same thing that we would talk about in, in like the French right, or is it more like the American right? Uh, that's a very good question. Depends on the country, uh, actually. Uh, for example, in in Peru, right now we have a liberal liberal uh, party in the sense that it was um, conservative economics. In terms of economics, it's conservative. In terms of social rights, well, let's say social rights, naming, for example, abortion or or minority rights, etc. Quite liberal in the sense that they they supported these these things. Um, Damn, I need to move to Peru. <laughs> Are you? That's a party. No, it, it, that's the problem also in Peru. Parties don't last long. I mean, mm. they they get created every every five years more or less okay. between coalitions of. Things and so there's some parties that last long, but they're not the best parties, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so really yeah, uh, for example, for example, the current president is actually was actually the vice president. Now I'm talking about Peru, because the last president had to resign because of um, corruption allegations. I mean, <laughs> in terms of politicians, I think Peru is not the best example. All of our <laughs> politicians are or in jail or dead. <laughs> or being prosecuted, being searched for. I mean, but literally. I mean, all living politicians uh, are or in jail or being looked by by the authorities. There's one who is in California. If if you find him, please send it back. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, and and it just it, it it is that as absurd as it sounds. So one of the one of the or our past presidents suicide it may commit suicide last year when the police went to his house to cut to catch him mm. is, is that, that is that is not a good sign <laughs> wow that is not yeah that is not a good although one <laughs> one might one might argue that the american politicians are just better at hiding their crimes <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> or I mean, maybe better able to <laughs> yeah uh, for all yeah. you know for all the, the the bad uh that there is in in western democracies 
and and the criticism we levy towards our politicians. You know, when you look in in other places, and that's one thing which I have an issue with, with how capitalism and our democracies are being criticized today. It it ignores a lot of the the good that the system does. And the anti-system movements, while I understand them, I'm very afraid that they throw they mischaracterize the reality of the situations and they throw the baby with the bathwater. Um and and what you just said, Alex, even though it wasn't jest, I think is a reflection of that because there's a lot of anti-corruption in uh you know anti-corruption systems in place and and of course not everyone is sweden or finland in on in that regard and there is a, a you know some oh, fudging and the yeah but it it it's not as bad as people think it is and the government is not as as inefficient as people say it is and all of that, I think, is actually doing a disservice to the entire population and people do a yeah, disservice it, it, to themselves. In fact, more to the point, I would say Peru, even if I complain and make jokes about it, is not, is not doing that bad. I mean, the last mm. 30 years, we have had constitutional issues, presidents that tried to stay too long or, and so forth. But we have just managed to like put the ones that should go to jail to jail and uh, try to, and I have like a very good economic development actually. I mean, Peru is a lot better now than ten years ago, and then twenty years ago, and then thirty years ago. I mean, and, and and it's something that happens everywhere in Peru. People complain still, and they don't realize that uh, compared to even other South American countries, we're no, we're not doing that bad. I mean, there's there's also uh, there's a reason why there's so many. Uh, people from Venezuela that come to, to, to Lima and Peru in general, and that's another whole different issue. Um, but um, even if there's a lot to complain in Peru, we are doing more or less good. I mean, I would say that uh, it's, yeah, it's, of course, we're not uh, in a European level of, of, of development, and, and, and it's still very long mm. uh, after we'll get there. But uh, yeah, it's 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 something that you can see, and 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 I and I can see it in, in, in when I was there. I was for a month on, on December to ja January, and the prices, for example, of things are not as as um, as cheap as uh, as they were once. And uh, people ha have uh, smartphones everywhere, even the one mm. people who work in the field, for example. Uh, so it's it's one of those things that yeah maybe. If you look every day, you don't realize it. But if you think uh, like five years or ten years uh, ago, it's it's really a dramatic change. Mm. So yeah, you can you can actually yeah you can have a, well depends on what you do of course. But it's 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 not really it's not really that bad. And uh, what I was saying about the Venezuelan um, that's that's that was another issue. Is that another thing that I've got to learn while I was there? I mean, I, I've heard it all the time because of talking to friends or talking to people like in Peru and I've been there, you know, it's been, on, it's been going on the Venezuela migration has been gone for years. So it's, it's the thing that I've always heard, but this time it was even worse in the sense that many people, and I would say mostly middle-class people in Peru have this aversion to, to Venezuelans in the sense that they are convinced that they are criminals. Really? And, oh, I've uh, never heard that before. And uh, in fact, one of the phrases I've heard is, you know, the first ones who, who who got out of the country at the beginning went to Colombia, to the United States, or the ones with the money, they went to the richer countries. And now the ones who, who got to Peru were the poor ones and the criminals. Like, we got the last <laughs> tale of the migration, you know, and uh, and then we got we got the bad ones. So there's Which racism is, everywhere. Is what you right, right, right. I mean, they're sending it's, murderers. They're sending... Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, it's, ah, not, it's not even racist. They're not it's sending it's, their it's best. It's the same thing. <laughs> no, but I mean but, racism, uh, obvious, you know, yeah. like discrimination in, yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that's, and that's... and it's sad because I I was listening to a, a TEDx talk uh, that was was done in Peru last year, where was uh, there was a Colombian presenting the facts actually in statistics, and there was no statistic that would show that there were you no know, criminals were more likely to be Venezuelans or or Venezuelans were more likely to be criminals. I mean, uh, in in Peru. Should, so yeah, I mean, should, we should know by now that the facts don't matter as much as we think they do or as we would want them to. And 
being surprised about you know being surprised about that four years ago was understandable and the reasonable reaction being surprised about this today i think it's just naive <laughs> it's not it's just, just naive, naive it's idiotic if we are still surprised that facts don't move people and don't convince people as much as they should we are being obtuse Like the, the well, fault is on us yeah, now yeah. for now. And yeah, maybe I, I, we would like to change that. Maybe we would like to make it so people understand and, and um, internalize facts better. But if we're still surprised that they don't, we're the ones being dumb. We're the ones being morons. Sorry, not yeah, morons, fact, idiots. No, no, I, I understand that. In fact, just, just I, since I heard don't it say that fact. much. Don't say fact. Facts I, don't I, exist anymore. No, Sorry. Go yeah, ahead. Just, just because, just because I, I heard it so much. Mm. I, I started to question the 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 the, the, the idea of of of, of may, maybe they're right. I mean, how how how, how why should I know better? I mean, mm. I I started questioning the the, the, the fact itself. I mean, mm. I was thinking maybe maybe they're right. Maybe there are more criminals that are Venezuelans, <laughs> and and I don't really know. Maybe maybe right. maybe that's the truth. I mean, mm. I guess there's some study somewhere which would be oh, yeah. easy I, I to think check, that... but. Uh, I think that, like, independent of that issue, you know, we should always do that, right? We sh I think that, that the Democratic Party, especially right now in America at least, you know, you see that problem that you're describing right now, which is they're not doing that, and, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt them probably. But mm. we all should do that. We should say, well, maybe the other side, maybe my bias is leaning me toward – I mean, I don't think it's true on your, you know, in that specific, it's very unlikely that like a whole race of people or a whole culture of people are all criminals. But I mean, yes, to be clear, in that case, I think not just in that case, probably in not, all cases, right? the facts that the, the okay, I'm going to stop saying facts. No, uh, I'm going to keep saying facts. The fact that facts don't convince people doesn't mean that facts aren't facts and aren't real, right? So in well, this case, the, TED talk, the, the TEDx talk that you were talking about, uh, Franco, that was showing the data and showing the fact that that is in, in, in fact not true, I don't dispute that. I think it's important to understand that this is reality. But, it, you know, the fact that Facts don't convince people. Don't change the fact that facts are facts. Um, so, well, you know, I think, I think the problem the problem gets more 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 gray. And I don't know how much we want to dig into this, but the problem gets even more gray when you find out that statistics are statistics, and they're not. You know, they they enlighten us to certain parts of truth that we might not have otherwise seen, but they do not show us the truth. And especially the way that the statistics can be presented, we know that on Fox News they present them in one way, CNN they present them in another. It's the same exact data; that it's just how it's spun. So, well, you know, I would the argue it's not the same exact. Itself. I would argue it's not the same exact data. It's it's chosen and picked. And when you're on a 24 hours news channel, yes, you can make the numbers say whatever you want. When you're making a presentation from a, an expert and a, a scientist who has, you know, a, a, a mastery of that topic, then you should trust them a little bit more. Not blindly and not, you know, it, it's there are still there are some things that aren't maybe completely objective, but there are some things that are factual. And the the now I'm I'm <laughs> defending facts after having mm -hmm. railed against them. Right. I, Please right. understand, I wasn't railing against facts. I was railing against the idea that people would still be surprised that facts aren't enough to convince people. And that's the lesson here. Facts still exist and are still real. They can be massaged, but that's always been the case. You know, that there's always been a way of presenting truth that favors your view or the other person's view. That's the whole job of a politician oh, to do that. How much of that though is how much of that though is the fact that we don't actually know what the truth is for the most part in these contentious yeah, issues. Yeah, well, that's that's for the mo for many of these issues, but for example, if you talk about, you know, um Healthcare. I was going to say climate change, but right. I, well, I, no, that, I mean, that's an easy one. If you talk change. about healthcare, um, if you talk about healthcare, the the obstination of America to make it work a certain way is is factually 
uh, detrimental in almost every metric for almost every uh, part of yeah, the population. We, we right? pay way more as a as a country, as a society, and as an individual than we would for the worse health care. Because right. of the way our system is set up. That is absolutely exactly. true. Yes. So but that is it, one example. Of there's enough. Of it, there's yeah. like, what, 20, 30 years of data to back that up yeah. for sure. Exactly. So that is an example of a factual truth that is difficult to dispute, but that is being disputed by some. But sure. Anyway. Yeah. And I, I, I think that I think that, though, that you're probably what, what people see is, oh, no, the healthcare system is fine. And what's actually being said is, no, I like the way the healthcare system is because I can get to my doctor at my time and choose my, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. And I don't have to wait in line for six months and all this kind yeah. of stuff. That's, which, that's the thing that's being marketed. You know, there are systems uh, which work, take the best of both worlds, as is yeah. the one in France, for example. We can go to and any hopefully doctor. hopefully we'll we get do. there one day. Hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. All right. Anything uh, you want to add as a conclusion, Franco, to uh, the the South American part of the conversation? Uh, good question. Uh, I just hope that. Yeah. I mean, my best hope for Latin for South America or Latin America in general is that just not destroy it. Not this. So ask for any politician to just not destroy what there is and just let the country <laughs> like be itself for a while. I think that's what we did uh, with Peru, and it more or less worked. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's I fear, I fear, most... I fear change the change in it's change the whole system. I don't know. That's that's what I fear the most. Mm. Is Peru the most functional slash uh, mm. successful country no. in, on the continent no, at no, this no, point? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, we are maybe an example of recent years, but uh, uh, I think that. If you ask me, the one, the one everyone, um, um, I mean, there's, there's two options, uh, be it Uruguay or Chile. Mm. Uruguay is small, so it doesn't count as much, sadly. Uh, but it's really an example of, of good politicians. Um, they've been mostly on the left, but now they're on the right, I think. Uh, but mostly, mostly doing you know, good policy and not trying to change a everything or trying to destroy what they have. And it's been... Doing good, I mean, not excellent, but it's just a good example of a good running country. Mm. And Chile, you, that depends on whom you ask, is, it has been a really uh, right-wing country, even though there's been left-wing co governments. I mean, you could argue it's been very similar to the U.S. in terms of how it's been be, being run since the 90s, since the end of dictatorship. And they have, they have like, grown, no, even before being, well, they were right-wing even in the dictatorship, of course, and they have been growing very, very strong for a long time. And they're like, you know, we Peruvians envy the Chileans because of many reasons, not not be, not only because they're rich, but everyone sees the the, the Chileans as, yeah, they're they're they are the the rich ones. Mm. And and it's and I, in fact that's something I wanted to say when when especially when they were saying, oh, you know, the Chileans are protesting just like everyone in Earth in Latin America is protesting, so they're not as good as they were. That's the thing I heard in France, and. I, th I, and it's my opinion definitely. I, I see that the the Chilean protests more like the French ones actually, in the sense that it's middle class people that think that the th system is not fair, which it isn't in in in, in almost in general, uh, more than people fighting for democracy or people fighting for for I don't know for their uh, rights to be respected or you know for for shameless things done done by politicians. Mm. It's it's really it's more the, the, the issues that Chile has are more of a, uh, a rich country issues more than like, you know, the rest of the South American issues, which are really poor, poor people or, or mm, developing uh, injustices, or, you know, corruption. Of, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean they're not important. It's just that they're in a, in a different level, you know, of of of, right. of, of, of importance. It, what you're saying is, it shows kind of that the the country is more successful. Actually, not that it is less successful well, or as yeah it it seems to lend credence to what you were saying patrick which is about like capitalism and how the the, the politics at least in america and what you're talking about with the french left where they they want to totally upend the system 
And it's because they don't see all the value that the system gives them because it's sort of it's you know, it's it's taken for granted. Basically, it's, mm, it's yeah, just no, exactly. the undertone. Right. We all have a TV in our house. We all have Netflix and all this kind of stuff. And it's you know, that's great. But it's not something that's seen as this is there because of our capitalist economy and all this kind of stuff. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I, I love it when people agree uh, with me. So thank you. Alex, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we said we were all entrepreneurs because now it seems that we're all supporting capitalism. So at least the bias was announced on the, beforehand. At the beginning. Yeah. I mean, again, uh, it doesn't mean there aren't things that should be fixed. And I think some of the things you mentioned, Alex, like uh, the, the income inequality, especially in the US, I think it's less so in uh, Western Uh, Europe, because we have a lot of social safety nets that that level the playing field that are important. But in, in the US, for all the great things that the economy is doing, the working poor is a, like when I go to the US, it is visible anywhere I go. Oh, the, it's, it, it's, it's extremely transparent. And it, yeah. it, there are there are people here who put blinders on and don't and don't really see it. But it is palpable how mm. different the life is of someone who's even upper middle class, not a billionaire mm. or anything, and someone who is just working, you know, two or three jobs. And I, I mean, I've been there. I worked at Cracker Barrel. I was a dishwasher. It, it was, it is not, it is a totally different life. And it is very easy to see how someone stuck in that position with no, no real way out could become very angry and want to just throw the whole thing out, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and I think it's not, you know, the same in not that there isn't poverty in France, obviously there is, but sure. at least I guess what I'm trying to say is at least when, when you're poor in France, you get some help from the government. I guess you do in the U.S. as well. It's unfair to say you don't. Um, but you also get like, uh, uh, free education, healthcare, like no one is bankrupt because of, uh, student loans in, yeah. in, in the West and that kind of thing when you see that situation when you look around you all of your friends are basically have taken a loan on their life to study uh it, it's it's it feels extremely unfair and i think it's not wrong to feel that way but. well and and you've got yeah. that but you've also got the fact that we have a history even up until like the 90s and some might argue even up until today of um you know, sort of demonizing 30 or 40 percent of our society that makes up the, the vast majority of the, you know, lower socioeconomic class, which mm. is people who have, you know, darker skin than than white people do. Mm. So you 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 have that on top of there's inequality. There's also this sort of racial prejudice of uh, older generations. And there's on top of that, this history that weighs on people who are in those demographics And it, you know, I, I can't even imagine what that's like, but it, it would seem to affect your, your psyche. There's no way it couldn't, right? But I'm not that, even just that, talking about that. Like student loans, like quote unquote, I'm rich saying on white top kids, of the student loan, on top thing, of that, right? Yes, even right, on right. top of that, you've got this other dimension of yeah. socioeconomic inequality that is, you know, Compton, California, or yeah, that yeah, is, yeah. you know, downtown Atlanta. And, 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 you know, south of downtown Atlanta. And those things e make it even more complicated than just, you know, you've got kids who have a lot of student loans. Yeah. You wanted to, to say something, Franco, and we'll end on that. I'll give you the last word. Nice. I was going to say that just that getting the two sides, I think Latin America in many ways have always been in, in, in some way in the middle, trying to be like the U.S. in some ways or in some countries or in some times, in some governments, and sometimes trying to be like Europe in other times. So it's like a mix of experiments trying to run one and the other. So far, I would say that the, the ones that follow the U.S. have worked the best. <laughs> Doesn't Weird. mean that it's going to be like works. it. Uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, and, and, you, and, it's, and it's still going on. I mean, it, it's like uh, the debate has always been and it always is in, in every each country, whether we should increase the minimum wage and try to get more social uh, security or social uh, rights to, to, to people in general and try to protect the ones that are worst off. And with a, with a small country that's not rich, it's hard, but you still have to do it at the same time that you try to manage business growth and, and try to get foreign investment so you have more employment. So it's, I think in, in Latin America, it's, it's one of those 
debates, eternal debates, as well as anywhere else, I guess, of mm -hmm. whether we should follow more the U.S. in trying to let's be rich and then try to get the social things, or let's try to mm, include the poor in the development so we grow in a more equal country, you know? I mean, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, I was with you until you said the ones that followed the U.S. <laughs> succeed, succeeded more. I was like, ah, oh, obviously we're better. But, oh, <laughs> damn it. All right. And that is a good point to end the show on. Thank you very much to both of you for being on. Um, it was lovely having this conversation with both of you. Do you have uh, some social accounts? So, Franco, I remember that last time. You, you gave us your uh, Google Plus account, <laughs> which I guess you, you, you I don't were have that it anymore, lone voice. Sadly. Yeah, they took it away from me. Uh -huh. so uh, yeah, do you have I, have, I guess my, my, my only online presence now is reduced to, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, I'm going to just do publicity. I, I'm starting this company that's called hackpackinglife.com. Okay. Hackpackinglife? So hackpackinglife.com and it's okay. it's it, it delivers everything uh, um, everything for travelers you know it's the perfect traveler kit right, right now it only works in peru for people who go to peru so yeah that's what has been keeping me busy so far uh, last last uh, i don't know six months <laughs> All right. So if people if people are going to Peru, I mean it's unlikely, but if they're if they want to visit the site, uh, yeah, be my guest. Hackpacking life. All right, I'll put the, com, yeah. the the link in the show notes. Um, what about you, Alex? Do you have yeah, a Twitter I'll, account um, or something like I'll, that? Yeah, I, I I am on Instagram. I'm not active, but you know you can follow me, and maybe I'll post every once in a while. Uh, a Mitchell coach. Or I'm sorry, a Mitchell coach. I, th I don't think there's a dot there. Um, and if you have any questions or if anyone would want to email me, it's a Mitchell dot coach at gmail dot com. Uh, I'll I'll go ahead and pimp the uh, the company I'm currently working to build, which is the Medical Empowerment Center. Um, we're in North North Atlanta, and uh, we're trying to provide strength training services, but also counseling and um, you know, medical cons consultation and things like that for people who have, uh, who are undergoing treatment for cancer or Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, um, because these sort of more holistic therapies are really, really important for those populations, as well as just people who are 50 and over and, uh, you know, trying to stay young. So, uh, I'll, I'll definitely, uh, put my name in the hat for that. Um, All right, so I will uh, I will follow you and please ask you to uh, stop making me look bad because I just do podcasts and you do awesome things for people. Um, that is really we're cool. trying to. Well, we're doing good. podcasts is awesome too, Patrick. Oh, thank you. I, That's, I, I, I was. Fishing. I really admire your podcasts. They're, they're really good, <laughs> I, uh, dude. But, there's there. I listen to no other uh, world news podcast. Oh, thank you, thank you. But you know, I, I'm I'm actually I'm. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm approaching 50 uh, slowly, but surely more I'm quickly now that I have a kid. Um, so I, I, maybe I do need, do, if you do consultations via Skype, I might, you know, uh, engage your services because... Uh, Let's make my, it happen. My back is not what it used to be. <laughs> it never is unless you train it, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it Time does do that. And, you yeah. know, I will say a lot of the stuff that you hear about age-related degeneration is more like civilization-related degeneration. It has nothing to do with age. Mm. So you mean like it's it's because we, the way we live? It's because we sit down, you yeah. know, 60% mm. of you the day. You eat too, 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 much, too many croissants, uh, Patrick. Yeah, we have oh, that, all that, the calories you we'd ever cannot. need. And now you We don't really me. have to walk. <laughs> yeah so it's really so all i have to do is use my stand-up desk uh twice a day and my problems will be fixed is what you're saying you'll never experience pain again patrick you'll never experience pain you'll be wealthy beyond your wildest dreams it'll be great you know the, the back pain i'll take but uh everything else i already am uh lucky to be doing what i'm doing and to have the life i'm having so i wouldn't dare ask for more I'm incredibly uh, happy already. So, um, and also, I'm going to Japan next week. Hopefully, uh, I'm leaving in two days. And the little one was sick, and now we're sick uh, from what we had. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, how is that gonna work? Um, 
such we'll see i guess it's Where we don't have a fever yeah no i know but we don't have a fever so yeah. that's the important thing right that's what matters um we'll see maybe i'll be quarantined in a japanese airport for two weeks uh hopefully <laughs> not. Not fun. what a fun trip yeah, yeah. indeed uh, but uh, if you want to see pictures from that trip, whatever it ends up being, either the inside of one room or actual Tokyo, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm not Patrick over there. Uh, I'm also not Patrick on Twitter and Facebook. I have the links in the show notes. And even more importantly, you can support uh, the show on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash the Phileas Club. The link is also in the show notes. It takes about two and a half minutes to support and it helps enormously you can uh, make this show uh, it is you that makes this show happen so thank you very much to those who already support it and if you don't if you've been listening for a while maybe you know consider giving a little bit of uh, money throwing a buck our way um, so that we can keep doing it thank you so much and oh yeah if you want to comment frenchspin.com if you have anything to add to our conversation Thank you to both of you. Thank you to everyone who's listening. And we'll talk to you again in a few weeks. Bye.